Welcome to Battle Pirates Early Game Progression 101. So the idea is to show you how you can move from the very early researchable technology to some actually good ships. Uh, you can start to take your game to the next level and start making serious progression in the game. So this assumes you have some technology unlocked already from your labs. So fr from your weapons lab, the Cat Cutlass Missile Level 3, Third Cannon Level 4, from your naval lab, the Battle Barge would be preferable, but the Leviathan would work as well. Predator Sub could be a good option, or even the Sea Wolf, but I'm going to focus on the Battle Barge, which is the simplest of all four ships in there. From your Advanced Lab, uh, a few specials you should focus on at this level are the Guidance Scrambler for better evade, a Reactive Armor for penetrating defense, which means you're going to be more resistant to, to incoming fire from, from missile weapons, Engine 3 for speed, hardened barrel. That one increases uh, the range of cannon weapons only. Don't try to use it with missiles and other stuff. Uh, solid fuel booster. That one gives more range to your missiles only. Again, don't use that with other weapon types. And high explosive shells level 3. That one increases the area of damage of your mortars or rockets when they hit. Okay? So a lot of their specials in there, but these are the ones we need for now. From your weapons lab, you don't need everything. All you need from here is the third cannon level four and cutlass missiles level three or four, depending on what you want. I, I like three better, right? Don't waste your time unlocking everything here because you won't need them. I mean, you may need have our torpedoes for your first, first subs as well, but Everything else you can get easily from FM. For instance, whenever you need a better can, right? Instead of going for blueprints or whatnot, if you can hit tier one, you have the crossbow here. Very good can. Should be in your early builds as soon as you can get this guy, right? Massive damage, good range. In your naval lab as well. I mean, you don't really need to unlock all of these ships. Just unlock enough so you can actually start getting the ships from the foundry. So, for instance, a battle barge is more than enough to kill salvages level 40 and 51, and that's going to give you access to the Dreadnought and the Strike Cruiser. Once you get those, you really, really don't need floating fortresses or hammerheads. These are dead ends nowadays. Even sea wolves are, are dead ends. I mean, you can get much better fleets from, again, your foundry, right? So instead of a sea wolf, why don't you go and get a mis missile cruiser X, and from here you can then progress to the V2H which is like a sea wolf, just 20 times better, right? Those uh, researchable holes from the naval lab, they're only going to hold you back. I mean, floating fortresses or hammerheads, they're dead ends. Even sea wolves are dead ends. So focus on actually unlocking holes from the foundry. This is where the fun is. This is where you get actually very good holes that can be retrofitted for added bonuses uh, and firepower and, and so on. So by getting ready to hit level 40 salvages, you're going to be able to unlock the Dreadnought. By hitting level 51 salvages, you're going to be able to unlock the Strike Cruiser, which makes a great mortar fleet. And then probably with the tech you have today, you are able to get 150,000 points in Forsaken Mission. And that will give you some specials you need to make them better ships and even to unlock them too. Remember, you're entitled to a free crew every day. Those crews give you bonuses, so use them every day. And whenever you get the Lucky Bastard crews early in the game, uh, use it to get more blueprint drops from salvages. I mean, it lasts about 10 minutes, and in that time you can certainly do 2, 3, 4, even 5 salvages and get a lot of blueprint pieces, which will give you more weapon choices and some specials. Okay. Don't forget to roll your crews daily. So you open the Great Hall. And you see you have a free crew right here. So just basic crew buy. Whenever, if you're early in the game, you still need a lot of blueprints. So lucky bastards are a good choice. When you get them, don't don't throw them out. I mean, keep them and use them to get more blueprint drops from salvages, right? The war threats will also help you carry more resources to your base because when you have small ships, it's a lot of grinding, just loading the resources back into your base. So you can do that by using the wharf rats and carrying five times more. When building your early ships, there's two things you need. You need range and you need speed. 
Speed's gonna keep you away from your enemy's range, and of course your range will allow you to outrange them, so you don't even take fire. So it's possible, if you don't make any mistakes, to kill salvages for as long as you want without taking any damage. The advantage of the battle barge is, if you take damage, it's almost instant repair, right? You wait a few seconds and you can hit the, the free five minute repair per ship and be back in the sea. So resist the temptation, temptation and don't put any armor in there. The specials you want are from your researchable at this point. You need engine upgrade so you get the speed and you're gonna need solid fuel booster so your missiles get extra range so let's start with that and if you don't have level 3 start with level 2 that's fine level 1's probably not enough but level 2 or 3 would do the job here then you get the engine upgrade and again if you don't have level 3 go level 2 okay with this now you need weapons as I said from the researchable weapons the best one you're gonna get here is the cutlass missile Level 3 has more accuracy, 66%, so it's going to hit the enemy more often than the level 4. Although level 4 packs a hell of an extra punch here, so it's your choice, really. You're going to get this one first, and this is all you need. You build 5 ships like this, and you're going to be out killing level 40 and 51 salvages all day long. It takes a little bit over a day, so you can get a fleet in, what, a week? And then be ready to move on demonstration on how you can uh, hit salvages uh, do what we call kiting which is pretty much staying at maximum range so they don't ever fire at you so first of all you press the up arrow that is going to select all your ships then you click a point on the side and they're going to move there until they stack once they're stacked and uh, and make sure you do that before enemy gets in range now you can drive and just keep them at your maximum range which will outrange anything the salvages have so you can easily kill them with missiles uh, from a maximum range of course with battle barges will take longer than that but the principle is exactly the same okay so after you get the salvages you should be able to hit tier one forsaken mission even if you can't kill a whole target just nipping at bits and pieces of it uh, should help you get to 150,000 points, which is what you need to redeem a prize. You can reset and do it again in the same week. You have three days each time, which should be plenty for you to repair and hit again and repair and hit again until you get 150. By either hitting level 40 targets, which are the easiest on the map, or level 47, where pretty much one of them will give you all the points you need. Um, you need the first two prizes for to unlock the Dreadnought and the Strike Cruiser, and you're actually going to use Siege Battery quite a lot. Um, after that, on the second week, you do it again, you get Speed System 3, which is an improvement over Engine, and you get a Mortar, the Negotiator. Once you get that Mortar, forget about using any Mortars from your Weapon labs, uh, Lab, you won't need them, okay? Uh, that that Assault Missile D53Z, it's useless, don't build it, uh, it takes forever very expensive to build and it's just not worth it. The crossbow is a good choice. It's gonna be your, your next best cannon after the thuds. And so will the two armors there, D1X, D1M, which will give you respectively explosive and penetrative resistance bonuses. Now, as soon as you have enough uh, level 40 salvages and you got four dreadnought fragments and 50 tier one siege fragments, and you got Siege Battery 1 from Tier 1 FM. Now you can claim the Dreadnought. Instead of unlocking researchable holes, what you actually want to do is come here in the Foundry and unlock Tier 1 holes on each class. So to start, the easiest one to get is Siege class. So the Dreadnought, all you need to get it is Siege Battery 1, 4 fragments, and 50 tier 1 fragments and you can get them from salvages pretty much so you hit find target here and you see you need level 40 salvages killed and you just keep keep, keep killing them until you have enough fragments siege battery you get from forsaken mission tier 1 if you look at the prices here it's the second price right so once you have this and enough fragments 
then you can just come back here to the foundry there will be a little blinking icon there and you can claim it right now i can't because i don't have enough but as soon as you do you come and claim the dreadnought you do the same for the strike cruiser and that's going to give you a mortar fleet so again you need the first prize from tier 1 fm some fragments and if you find target you see in this case you need level 51 salvages you keep repeating that process so once you have tier one here if you want to keep evolving all you got to do is see what you need so in this case you need to have the dreadnought already and collect enough fragments siege battery 2 and reflective coating 1 which are in tier 2 of forsaken mission so by that point you should be able to get to tier 2 right and to unlock this guy you need level 30 mines which are very doable with the dreadnoughts you should have at that point so you just keep progressing like that in the game right let's see how you build your first dreadnought so this ship has ballistic uh, weapon bonuses so it's intended to be used with cannons of course you can be creative try missiles try mortars whatever you want but you're gonna see the best aspect of the ship if you go with cannons um, it's a siege class ship, meaning should do really well against mines. And if you're able to kill mines with that, you then can unlock the Vindicator and the following holes on the siege class. So you can progress your game in that aspect, just in following the same line of holes. Uh, you can also tailor it a little bit to do FM targets. It should do really well against low level FM targets. So now getting to tier two and three should be much much easier for you uh, than using any researchable holes the build you see here assumes you only have tier one technology available or researchable technology available nothing beyond that so it's a very simple build you can get much more sophisticated over time as you get better tech but that's there now, you want to extend range again. One of the most important things you want to have in this game is long range. So you outrange your enemies and you take less damage. So the special to extend the range of cannons is only at this level one option. is the hardened barrel, level 3. You get extra 50% range, right? So now you're going to outrange most missiles from and even a lot of cannon turrets, okay? Because this is a siege hull and again you can use in different ways but that's the way it was intended to be used so you're going to be using this guy to hit mines like level 30 mines level 40 mines so you can actually unlock better hulls in the foundries like the vindicator and and the crusader so you need extra defense against turrets and you just want and that's why you have to win siege battery level one from forsaken mission so that's a special you want to have on your Dreadnought at this point. This one will give you extra 30% defense turret. If you retrofit and improve its levels, like to, in this case, rank level 15, it actually gives you 37, but it starts at 30. You need speed, right? So you can move around and kill stuff fast before it kills you. So again, looking at basic at this point, if you're able to do tier one in Forsaken Mission a few times, you can get speed system level 3 this gives you a good speed and also great turn speed so your maneuverability gets much much better if you don't have that yet then again researchable tech engine level 3 okay but let's keep like that for now your final choices here will depend a lot on what you want to use this hull for so let's say you want to use this hull and a fleet of them to do your forsaken mission now we know they do a lot of explosive and penetrating damage so again from tier one forsaken mission you should have the d1m armor okay and you can use this to increase your penetrating defense to a higher value or you could also use a special here and put reactive armor level 3 it is a researchable special so you should have it by now okay with that you should as long as you keep moving to avoid mortar file uh, fire you should be able to do forsaken mission now if you want to if you want to do more of the mines 
they don't do penetrating damage at all. So then your choice here could be something like a ballistic layer armor three defense, because they do a lot of ballistic damage. So now you have very high defense plus turret defense. So that stacks and you're almost invincible against lower level uh, mine targets. Right, so this, for instance, could be a good compromise where you're optimized to do the mines, but you can also do Forsaken mission because you have some decent penetrating defense and turret defense. So that should work fine. Another option, you could go, instead of having a high defense, go for high evade. So more projectiles coming at you will miss your ship and actually hit the water. So this is another strategy, lower defense overall but higher evade bonus, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna stick with that build right now, but I encourage you to experiment. And as soon as you get tier one Forsaken mission and you start winning the crossbow, um, you could come in here then and replace your Thud Cannons with crossbow level one or level two when you get to tier two and so on. Just don't spend too much time retrofitting this ship you're going to get better holes and then you want to build them right but here it goes it's not a long build time either so you could replace a few of them and see the difference it makes right this guy packs a big punch uh both against turrets and against ships but especially against walls so that's going to be especially helpful against forsaken mission targets because they sometimes have walls against the turrets and you got to get through them Right, the third will take longer to do that. The crossbow will do it much faster. So what's next for you now? Um, follow similar process. Uh, unlock the strike cruiser, and now you can build a solid mortar fleet, as I'll show you in a moment. Uh, with these two fleets, a ballistic dreadnought and a mortar strike cruiser, you can complete a lot of the basic campaigns, unlock a lot of useful components. I'll talk about them in, in a moment. Uh, and just keep repeating those steps. So now you can unlock, for instance, the Missile Cruiser X or MCX and build a great missile fleet. A few highlights on campaign prizes you, you want to get as soon as you can is the D1C armor, which gives you cannon resistance and it's going to help you a lot against the mines. Uh, you can get that from second price pack and down the barrel. Uh, use your Strike Cruiser Mortar Fleet to complete Shell the Shore get the D2E armor, it's going to give you more evade bonuses, so that means more incoming projectiles will miss your ships and hit the water. Um, in Death Grip, the first price pack has a few things, but one of them, two of them actually, are the Anti-Mortar, the Hailstorm A, and the D71L Mortar. Uh, you want these two guys, so you're going to take less mortar fire, for instance, doing Forsaken Mission. And this mortar is slightly superior to the Negotiator 3. So it's a balance. I mean, you can keep Negotiator 3 from Tier 1 Forsaken Mission or the D71L from this campaign and, you know, see which one works better for you. If you can do Hunt the Nemesis, at least the first level, it's the easiest one. Price pack 1 has the Phalanx uh, Anti-Missile uh, Level 1. That's also going to help you in Forsaken Mission and will help you against Level 75 Elite Salvages. Uh, they fire a lot of long-range missiles at you. Uh, this can save you some fr from some damage. Um, here's a couple more fleets. So, like I said, the Strike Cruiser build I recommend with Tier 1 technology. And again, once you're able to consistently do Tier 2 in Forsaken Mission using the Strike Cruiser or the Dreadnought, you should have the tech to build this Missile Cruiser here uh, using the D55Z uh, missile, uh, D2E armor from the campaign I just mentioned. Speed System 4 from Tier 2, and the Flanks 1 from first level of Hunt the Nemesis. I mean, this ship, a fleet of Missile Cruiser X, can help you do start doing now raids. I mean, the current raid cycle, you should certainly be able to do Tier C targets with this fleet uh, all day long. Once you get the Strike Cruiser from hitting level 51 salvages, this is a great fleet to do Forsaken Mission right now. So what you could use here is... A good missile defense using reactive armor then you balance that with explosive defense with the d1x I'll, again this is a tier one forsaken mission prize you should have it or or be able to earn it with your dreadnought fleet or even your your researchable fleet 
Another researchable special is high explosive shell street. This one is good for mortars and rockets only, or mostly. It increases the splash, so the area damage gets of damage gets bigger when your mortar shell hits the ground. As for mortars, don't go with researchable tech. Uh, what, what you can get is a negotiator mortar one from oh, sorry three from tier one forsaken mission. This guy packs a very good punch and builds faster, has a good range as well. Uh, or if you did the early campaigns, you should also have not by now the D71 mortar, right? D71L is usually considered the best one. The N has a bit less range, so I wouldn't recommend that. So you could use either this guy or this guy. Let, let's see how it looks like with Negotiator 3 from Tier 1 Forsaken Mission. If you did early campaigns, you should have the Phalanx uh, level 1 counter measure. So that can help you shoot down some incoming missiles. So you could have a few of those in your fleets, right? Uh, from early campaigns as well, you could get the Hailstorm A, and that helps you shoot down mortar. So it's a matter of whether or not you're taking fire, you come in here and you can refit some of these in. Uh, but I'll leave that to you. Once you start hitting level 2 Forsaken Mission, you can improve this ship a little bit, give it more mobility, for instance, with Speed System Level 4. That's on Tier 2 Forsaken Mission. Okay? To wrap it up, uh, some parting words. Um, so the moment you have a good Siege Fleet with your Dreadnoughts and a good Garrison Fleet with your Mortar Strike Cruisers, so the next step would be to get a good assault fleet, with it, which is the missile cruiser to get started, and then some submarines. I mean, you can start with researchable submarines like the Predators, but they won't take you far. Uh, the Skirmish uh, hull class will be in Foundry uh, according to Kixai next August, meaning then you can actually redeem a tier one sub and that will complete all the core fleets you need. Again, cannons, mortars, missiles, and submarines. That that That's the core of any good pirate, right? All other weapon types you see, uh, UAVs, launchers, uh, rockets, and everything, they're more niche weapons, so unless you're gonna spend some coin in the game, um, or you have all the core fleets up to speed, uh, shy away from those weapons because they, they're not broadly usable overall in the game. Instead, focus on moving up the ladder, right? So you got your MCX, now you could go for your V2H and get a better missile hull. You could go to a Crusader and get a better cannon hull. You know, until you can get to tier four and five, and I'm pretty sure you're going to be a very happy pirate. Um, as you get better components, one mistake a lot of new players make is they keep refitting the same old ships over and over and over. And then sure you can get your dreadnoughts and make them shine with all the tier four technology. But that same technology would do much better in a higher level hull. So instead of making a dreadnought, uh, refit over and over and over until you get the latest. I mean, why not build a Crusader instead with that same technology? It'll do much better than a dreadnought ever will. And it's a better use of your shipyard time. Again, unless you're spending money, shipyard time is critical for you. So don't waste it refitting old ships, okay? Um, happy sailing out there and I hope you all found this useful and help you progress through all